Well, hello there. A few weeks ago, I shared a reel or a short or whatever you prefer to call them that seemed to resonate with people. It was about making art that you would want to hang on your own wall versus just making whatever seems to perform well on social media. It's really easy to fall into that cycle of throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks and basically remaking whatever gets the most likes, even if painting or drawing that particular thing doesn't truly fulfill you. For example, during lockdown, I wanted to get better at painting cutesy anthropomorphic animals, and the new Animal Crossing game had just come out, so I was painting all the characters from it, and turns out, since the game was trending at the time, those paintings did really well on Instagram, and I started selling commissioned paintings of the characters online. But after a while, painting the same big-headed, nubby characters just wasn't bringing me joy anymore. I had gotten really good at painting them, but it was like my brain was just bored of doing the same thing over and over again. It craved a challenge. Now, I'm not really sure how I went from cute Animal Crossing characters to wanting to paint a Mai Tai drinking, tiki shirt wearing gill man on the beach, but that's just where I am right now mentally. It was an idea that popped into my head and I was like, yeah, I want that on my wall. So I decided to gesso an old canvas and make it happen. In the middle of this process, I also decided to completely rearrange my studio, but we'll talk about that in another video. I've always been a big fan of Halloween, as I just have good childhood memories of putting my costumes together with my mom and going to thrift stores to find all the right pieces. But after the holiday this year, I just didn't want Halloween to end. So monsters have been sneaking themselves into my work. The Creature from the Black Lagoon has become my favorite of the classic Universal monsters, maybe because I feel like I can relate to him more now that I live in Florida. And I think the tiki theme is coming from the decor I've been making for my bridal shower, like the invitations I made in a recent video. I'll link it here and in the description box below if you're interested in watching it. I also just have an obsession with 60s themed tiki bars. I even keep a list in my phone of ones I've been to and ones I want to go to. And I guess I just felt the creature fit that mid-century setting since his films were released in the 1950s. I know this idea won't be popular amongst the Animal Crossing crowd that made up most of my followers when I started my art account, but making this painting got me excited and allowed me to enjoy the process again. Plus, the best part about being an artist is having the ability to constantly reinvent yourself. Speaking from personal experience, if I rely on Instagram to decide what I make, it usually leads me down a path of feeling depleted and wondering why the heck I'm even doing this in the first place. But then, eventually, I come to my senses when I realize I just wouldn't be me without my art. Now, I'm not telling you to forget about the analytics of whatever social media platform you use. I'm just saying, if you're always chasing after whatever is trending, you might lose that human connection that a lot of us are looking for when we log on to these apps. I know that sentence sounds really contradictory, but as frustrated as I can get with Instagram sometimes, it's the place I've met any art friends I've made since college, and we've connected on more than just the fact that we draw or paint. We just have similar interests, and that's what keeps me coming back. That's not to say that I don't still get disappointed when I put so much time and effort into something and it barely gets any likes. But if I am going to spend that time and effort on a painting, I'd rather it be something I want to display in my studio or home instead of just shoving it into a drawer to be forgotten about.
Okay, so here is a good example why taking a step back from your work every once in a while is a good idea because although we're going for that fun mid-century style here, uh, I can see that I already have this curve in his back, like too extreme. So we're going to try and straighten that out a bit and hope that things look a bit better once we get the chair painted in. So yeah, let's see. If your art practice and social media has started to make you feel drained, it's important to remember to take a step back. Do something you enjoy. Watch your favorite movie, go to the library and check out a book you've been wanting to read and take some time to just enjoy yourself because these things could lead to inspiration. The internet probably doesn't need another video talking about self-care, but there's a reason why everyone's talking about it. Build good routines and practices, ones that work for you, because we're all unique. And give yourself realistic goals when it comes to sharing your work on social media. Remember, there's no way to control likes or follows, but you could set yourself the goal of posting three times a week if that seems feasible to you. If you try it for a while and it's still too much, shoot for one day a week. I had a new plan to post a reel every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and new photos every Tuesday and Thursday. I've been doing this for a couple months now, but it seems posting before Wednesday is not really worth my time or effort, so I plan to lessen that to three times a week, and that way I'll have that time to put more quality into my work rather than stress about quantity. If you're not taking care of your own basic needs, then you're not going to produce your best work. Find balance and remember that making art has therapeutic benefits. So if you're not enjoying the process, something needs to change. Okay, hopefully that's straight. It's hard to tell in the viewfinder, but good enough for now. All right, well, all in all, I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. A lot of people might find it strange, but it makes me happy, and that's all that matters. I really think it captures that mid-century vibe I was going for. The colors are vibrant, and as I fill up the rest of my wall, I think it'll really tie in together well. I think eventually I will go back in there and do some glazing to create a shading on his arms and like under his chair and everything, but I kind of want to make a whole video about glazing with acrylic paint, so I will save that for then. And yeah, that's the great part of having your own art on your walls. You can pull it down anytime and rework it. So if this video helped you in any way, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you in the next one. Bye.